What's going on guys, I'm John and in this video I've got 14 tips for hunting out of a ground blind. Whether you just bought your first one brand new or you hunt out of these things year after year, hopefully you can take one of these tips back to the field with you this fall. So let's check it out. Number one, air it out. Whether your blind is brand new or it was laying in the garage next to the lawnmower the entire off season, the first place that you want to open this thing up is not in the woods the day you want to hunt. Get that thing out a few weeks early, open it up, set it up, and let it air out. Better yet, put it right in the spot that you want to hunt and let the animals get used to it. Maybe you don't have the opportunity to get it set up in your hunting spot early. In that case, consider just opening it up, putting it out in the yard, and letting it sit for a few weeks just to air out. Number two, spray it down. Now I would classify this tip as completely optional and I'm not talking about your favorite scent control spray. What I am talking about is some kind of water repellent spray that you can use on the outside of your tent. If you have concerns with water in your ground blind, this can be a really good way to go to give your tent a little bit more protection. Run down to your local sports store, check out the camping section, and there's multiple products to pick from. Not only do these sprays help with the water, but you can actually find sprays that can help protect against the UV rays from the sun. So if your blind is sitting outside all year, this will help with the fading of the color and the camouflage. Number three, play the wind. Okay, you found the spot where you think the animals are going to come out, whether it's a food plot, a water source, a runway, a scrape line, whatever it may be, now it's time to get set up. And the rule of thumb is you always want to be downwind of where you think the shot's going to be or you want the wind in your face. Let's take this scenario for example. This deer is going to come into the food plot and you have a strong wind coming out of the southeast. In that case, you want to set up your tent on the northwest side of the food plot. And vice versa, if this deer comes out and there's a northwest wind, you probably want to set your tent up on the southeast side of the food plot. Now I know this is hunting guys and we can't always predict where the animals are going to come from but you definitely want to play the wind and put yourself in the best possible situation. Number four, avoid the skyline. In some scenarios there's going to be a temptation to set your ground blind up on a higher vantage point to give you better visibility. This isn't always the best case scenario. When an animal comes out and looks in your direction, the silhouette of the ground blind on top of the hill is gonna stick out like a sore thumb. I'm not gonna say this is gonna ruin your hunt because it may and it may not, but it's definitely gonna draw a little bit more attention to where you're sitting. So just try to avoid the skyline if you can. This isn't as big of a deal for rifle hunters if you plan on shooting 100, 200, 300 yards, but with archery, if you wanna get up close and personal, it's something that you should definitely consider. Number five, clear the ground. This is an easy one, but also an important one. Take the extra 30 seconds to remove all the leaves, all the sticks, everything on the ground where your ground blind is gonna go. So when you get into a situation where you have to move around, maybe you're getting ready for a shot that you don't snap a twig or step on some leaves and blow the whole thing up. Number six, brush it in. You can get as crazy as you want when brushing your ground blind in, but at a minimum, here's what to consider. The silhouette of your ground blind, meaning the top, the sides, and the bottom. Also, consider your environment. If you're hunting in pines, use pines. If you're hunting in cedars, use cedars. If you wanna set this thing up on the edge of a cornfield, use corn stalks. I think you guys get the point. Let's see the difference. Number seven, pick your chair. Now you can go down to Cabela's and spend 80, 90, $100 on these great heavy duty swivel padded chairs, and that's just fine, but you can also consider some simple things a pail, one of these foldable stools, or the classic camping chair that you sit around the fire with. Regardless, you should always ask yourself multiple questions. Is it mobile? Does it fit in my ground blind? Is it quiet? Can I easily maneuver it if I have to move it to make a shot? Can I shoot off of it? This is all completely up to you. I think sometimes how comfortable a chair is is the first thing that people look at, but the reality is if you've got an animal coming in quickly and you've got to be able to Get out of a big comfortable chair, get on the edge of the seat, and take a shot quickly and quietly. Is a big comfortable chair the thing that's right for you? And I don't know, that's your call. Regardless of what you pick, get it out in the off season, sit on it, take some shots off of it, and make sure it's gonna work for you. Number eight, windows. You've got a brand new ground blind, you just got it set up in the field, look at all the windows in this thing. You're gonna open all of them up to give yourself better visibility. Well, you know what? This is what you look like. When I hunt, I try to keep the least amount of windows open as possible. Maybe just the two in the front quarters, and that's it. And in those windows, even though they're open, I'm gonna leave up the shoot-through, camouflage, see-through mesh. In the back, I'm gonna leave them completely blacked out, all closed. If I wanna see what's going on behind me from time to time, I might grab the top corner of one of the windows and just peek out, but that's it. This is what it looks like from the outside with a window that's completely open and a window that's open but still has the mesh up. This clip shows you a comparison of a ground blind with all the windows down as well as a ground blind with all the windows up, two open just with the shooting mesh. Number nine, what silhouette? Consider this first clip. 
you've got the ground blind set up. The only window that's open is the big triangle window right in the front. However, the see-through, shoot-through, camouflage mesh is still up. Everything's great at this point. No animals can see you, but you decide that you want to see what's going on behind you. So you turn around and open up the back window as well. Now you've got a problem. Now any animal standing in front of the blind can easily pick out your silhouette with the new light coming in from the back of the blind. And as an FYI, when I pulled down this back window, I didn't completely pull the whole window down. I actually left the shooting mesh up in the back as well, and that much light still came through. This is probably one of the most important pieces of this video and hunting from a ground blind. Always take into consideration the light that's behind you, whether it's a window that's completely open or maybe all your windows are shut but you have a crack or one's not completely closed. Anytime you pass in front of that light, if there's something in front of you looking in, they're going to see the silhouette, they're going to see the movement. Number 10, lose the camo. Most of these blinds are completely blacked out in the inside, so it really doesn't make much sense to wear anything but black. But if you just spent $500 on the latest and greatest camo and it's scent control and you really want to wear it, that's fine. Just throw on an old black long sleeve t-shirt and a black mask over top of it. In this clip, I'm sitting in the middle of the blind completely blacked out. In the next clip, I'm sitting in the exact same spot with camouflage on. Here's the side-by-side -side comparison and you can obviously see the difference. Number 11, sit in the shadows. You got your black on and you're ready to go. Just avoid sitting too close to the front window because the closer you are to the window, the more light that's going to reflect off your face and your clothes. In this first clip, I've got all black on, but I'm sitting right next to the window. In the next clip, I've got the same clothes on, but I'm sitting in the back of the blind. Here is a comparison and you can obviously see the difference. The other important thing about sitting in the back of the blind or in the shadows is your arrow shaft is long, your rifle is long, you want to get back enough that when you raise either of your weapons you don't have to worry about hitting the front of the ground blind. Number 12, attention to detail. Now this one might be overly cautious, but from all my years of hunting I know one thing for certain, that when it comes to sound, sight, or smell with these animals, being over cautious is not going to hurt you in the least. So here's another thing to consider. In this next clip, I'm all blacked out, I'm ready to go, but I forgot one thing. The logo on my shirt is bright white, and if I move around in the ground blind and there's an animal standing in the outside looking in, they're easily going to be able to pick up that movement. What I should have done was turned my shirt around turned it inside out, or even covered it up with some black tape. The other part of me that maybe picked out is my face. Even though I've got the hat on, I've got the mask on, there's still the area around the eyes or the top of the nose. This is a situation where you may want to use black face paint. Number 13, hang your bow. For me, this is one of the more frustrating parts of bow hunting from a ground blind. What the heck do I do with my bow? If I have a rifle, I'm going to sit it in the corner, lean it up against the wall, no big deal. But with my bow, I'm not going to do that because that means I'm going to jam the cam of my bow into the mud and that's not good. If I have the room, I can lay the bow on the ground, but if I want to leave an arrow knocked, now I got to worry about my mechanical broadhead catching on something and opening up and that's just a mess. The only other option is I can leave it sit on my lap, which is fine, but for an all day sit during the rut, 10, 11 hours, it just gets kind of old to keep it there. But what I did was found a way to hang my bow in these hub style ground blinds. Go down to Home Depot and get yourself these gear ties. I'm going to leave the link below this video so you know what I'm talking about. But what it is, it's a big wire coated in rubber. Get the largest one, bend it in half, and you just want to make it look like an S. Now I can hang this part from the ceiling in the frame and I can hang my bow from right down here. I've also found that if you want to make the gear tie more rigid before you bend it into an S, just twist it. And you can see that now make your S and it's a little bit more sturdy. One note on this, if it does work, it's pretty slick for an all day sit. But what I found, especially with some of the smaller, older ground blinds, is your bow could be enough weight to collapse the ceiling in your ground blind. Obviously, if that's going to happen, um, it's not going to work for you. So you should practice before you go out in the woods. But these new ground blinds are so nice, they're so heavy duty that uh, the extra weight hanging from the ceiling shouldn't be any kind of a problem. Number 14, practice like you play. As a kid at some point, you've all had a coach tell you this, and with hunting, it's no different. You take the whole off season to practice. So take the extra time to get the ground blind out. Shoot out of it. Shoot sitting down. Shoot out of the windows. 
shoot through the mesh. Figure out what broadhead you're going to use and shoot that through the mesh. The only thing that's going to happen is it's going to build your confidence and if something goes wrong, at least it goes wrong while you're practicing and you can fix it for the hunting season. That's it guys. I'm no expert by any stretch of the imagination. I would love to hear from you. Please leave some comments below. Let me know some tips that you guys use when hunting out of ground blinds. I'd love to learn from you. If you like this video and you want to see other hunting videos, please support my channel by subscribing to the antlerscore.com YouTube channel. Otherwise, we'll catch you next time. Peace. Oh, <laughs>